I can't. Why? I just, I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't, man. It took you know, four movies. Four movies to get one good, amazing movie. It. Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, Suicide Squad, and the Killing Joke, and I almost threw up in my mouth thinking about it. DC, DC y'all, they did it. They took on the W, pun intended. Wow, just, they did it, they did it, they did it y'all. They, they, they did it. <laughs> they did it, DC finally did it. Yes, yes. Yes! 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 What is up, everybody? Reckless Fox here, and oh my god! Wonder Woman. Look, I'm just gonna put it out right now. And two things. This is a spoiler safe review. I will not try to spoil the movie all that hard. There's gonna be probably one spoiler, so like I said, it's gonna be a spoiler safe. That doesn't mean I'm gonna spoil the whole dang on movie, but I will spoil a couple of things about it. Might spoil the end. I'm not. I'm just saying right now. But for those of all who are watching live on Twitch, thank you guys very much for watching. And for those of y'all who are gonna be watching this later on on YouTube. Uh, thank y'all for watching. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, Wonder Woman. There's so much to say about this movie. One of them is, um, thank God that this movie was not as bad, was not as disappointing as Batman vs Superman. Thank God it wasn't a toss-up like Suicide Squad was, and thank God it's not. It's ten times better than Batman Killing Joke. Let's point this out right now. Let me get this out the way. When you look at DC movies from last year, we go like this. Batman vs Superman was a disappointing movie, although it made a lot of money and probably made a lot of DC fans happy because of the fact that they're finally seeing their favorite, two of their favorite DC superheroes on screen beating the hell out of each other. That's fine. I will easily say that's the only one, the few good parts about Batman vs Superman. I've already said that Batman vs Superman was an okay film. Suicide Squad, I actually uh, enjoyed more than Batman vs Superman. I know a lot of y'all got pissed about that when I said that in my initial review, even though I blatantly said there was a however in that mark saying that DC is taking the route of like DLC like uh, crap like Destiny Destiny has done with, Activ with Activision and Bungie, what they did with Destiny and stuff. And then, well, I have one friend and she will, I will not say her name. <laughs> Got mad because I said Batman the Killing Joke is one of the worst movies ever made, which it is, and I will I will continue to defend my argument about the Killing Joke. But if y'all have not seen my Killing Joke review, please go watch that before anything else. So now we have come to this Wonder Woman, which is one the, probably the most anticipated comic book movie in recent memory because of the fact that we are finally getting a proud female superhero, and she has her own solo movie. We had Catwoman, which was gutter trash, and we don't talk about that. We've had every, and a bunch of other female protagonist movies from from comic books like Barbed Wire, Catwoman, and a couple other ones that I'm probably not saying right now because I can't really, you know, off the tip of my head, tongue remember it. But this is the movie that we've been all waiting for, and I can easily tell you this without even going into detail. Yes, this movie is good. Yes, it's worth the money. Yes, it is worth seeing twice. This is the first DC movie where I will initially say I will go see it a second time right now. So, where do we go from here? Okay, so here are my likes and my dislikes about the movie. Anyone on Twitch, will uh, y'all can leave your comments and, and about stuff, about what you like about it, everything like that, Mumbo Jumbo. Okay, let's get to it. So... Wonder Woman, um, what I did like, I liked the direction it went, I liked, uh, first of all, let me get, let me give, um, special kudos to Gal Gadot, I will be one of the first to say I was not 
on board when Gal Gadot was announced as Wonder Woman because for me, Gal Gadot, I will just remember from Fast and the Furious being that really skinny twig girl that was hanging around and stuff like that. I will easily say Gal Gadot has come into her own as Wonder Woman, as Diane, which I initially thought she was going to be a better Diane than a, than a Wonder Woman. When I saw the original trailer to Wonder Woman, I'm going to be saying Wonder Woman a lot, guys, so every time you want, <laughs> go ahead and take a shot. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, I would easily say that I was a one doubters that think that Gal Gadot could not perform Wonder Woman correctly because there's a certain... There's a certain type of way you have to be a Wonder Woman character. And the last time we saw a Wonder Woman character on screen was when the CW tried to make Wonder Woman and that was a massive train wreck. It was way more of a train wreck than Cat, almost as bad as Catwoman because they did some things that you should never do with Wonder Woman and that is make her cry about a guy who friend zones her and she's eating ice cream on the couch crying like if it was freaking Bridget Jones's diary but Gal Gadot herself comes into her own in this movie and she does a hell of a good job so I am I will give her that I am clapping for Gal Gadot honestly I gave her more crap than I did Ben Affleck initially when Ben Affleck was announced as Batman but I did say that I would still go see Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman was either gonna be good and or bad and if it was bad you will not only have pissed off comic book fans riding in the streets you you will be pissing off every single woman in the entire world if you screwed up Wonder Woman and they didn't so thank you thank you Warner Brothers thank you director of Wonder Woman I don't remember your name thank you Zack Snyder because you had a hand in this and you know shout out to Zack Snyder um overall story concept was for those of y'all who don't know Wonder Woman was on Damascara uh, Steve Trevor, who's Chris Pine's character, shows up. Uh, then the, the Germans pull up in Themyscira, and he's asking them to help them end the war to end all war wars. Which essentially, before World War II, there was World War One because we have ne the entire world had never been a giant war that was until World War One. And Wonder Woman joins the brigade and fights to save the day and to stop a certain bad guy. I'll say Ares because everyone knows that Ares is um, one of the biggest super, uh, Wonder Woman villains in comic books. So yes, to stop Ares, you don't know who Ares is, you'll find out in the movie. Uh, overall characters and stuff like that, I really did like Chris Pine's character as Steve Trevor, who is the love interest of Wonder Woman and who initially, you know, wants to smash Wonder Woman just like in the comic books. Um, I really did enjoy Robin Wright's. Um, performance i enjoyed uh i can't remember i think the late the woman who played um wonder woman's mama i enjoyed her performance as you know just to see like you're about you're sending your daughter essentially for what you think you're sending your daughter to die in a war that she has no she should have no part in i really did enjoy that part i enjoyed the supporting cast which was the uh soldiers that wonder woman and chris pine were working with um, well, oh, Connie Nielsen. Connie Nielsen is the one who played um, Wonder Woman's mama. Uh, she was also in Devil's Advocate. I remember her now. She was in Devil's Advocate. She was in uh, Ridley Scott's Gladiator. She was on Mission to Mars. She was in uh, Basic, and she was actually oh yeah, she was and she was the uh, main antagonist for the following season two with Kevin Bacon. Now I remember. Oh, uh, she does a great job just showing the emotion of sending your daughter out to fight something that she should never be fighting in. Um, I love the set designs, I love the set pieces, the fact that this is the first superhero movie that actually talks about World War One. because when you look at Captain America, Captain America is always focused on World War Two. Why? Because Captain America fought in World War Two. No one initially didn't think that Wonder Woman fought in World War One. God forbid World War Two. I mean, in the comic books there are, there are times where she's actually is fighting in World War Two, such as the Justice League New Frontier series where it's uh, when they mix the Golden Age with the Silver Age uh, comic book versions of all the DC characters. Then Wonder Woman kills every man and everything like that, but that's a different story, okay? So, overall, set the pieces and all that stuff. Um, I The action is phenomenal. I Again, I give Gal Gadot a lot of props. She, she can hold her own. Um, overall design, overall the fight choreography, the editing, the writing, it, it genuinely, I, I should not be giving praise to a DC movie because notoriously, so far, DC movies are not that good. They're either mediocre 
or and they split the fans and critics down the middle or they're just bad and i'm actually giving praise to this movie and it's it's kind of weird uh, i think essentially for me what i really like about this movie and i know some a special someone who i actually went to go see this movie with he's probably gonna get mad if i say this i essentially thought that of this movie being captain america first avenger the first captain america movie and i compared both of the movies because Captain America First Avenger for me is a very underrated Marvel movie and I actually thoroughly enjoyed the First Avenger and this movie reminds me of the First Avenger which is not bad. I I thought the First Avenger was a great movie. Captain America Captain America 1. So I went in and watched the movie and I'm like okay this movie reminds me of Captain America the First Avenger. That's no I have no problem with that though. I love the First Avenger and I love this movie. Um, there are a few things that I, uh, I will, uh, there are a couple of nitpicks, and this is where I might, um, spoil a few things. Um, the overall ending and how it ends, like, the whole thing about Ares, for those of y'all who know anything about Greek, who don't know about anything about Greek mythology, Ares is the god of war, he pretty much brings out the war in everyone, etc, etc. Uh, anyone who's a Greek mythology, uh, who studies Greek mythology can correct me in the comments below, or in the chat. Um... Overall, though, um, the whole thing and how she beats him, because, like, because essentially when you, when you beat Ares, like, everyone stops trying to war and, and everything like that, but the problem is, because of the fact that we only know that Cat Wonder Woman served in World War One, what happens in World War Two? because even though events of World War One go into World War Two because of, uh, Germany was part of our, um, recession their stock market hit harder than our, uh, America does and the rise of Hitler and stuff like that what's gonna happen then like how how is Ares you know being defeated it's like where do we go from here because World War II is still gonna happen and everything like that um some of the dialogue was a bit cheesy but it, it, it's it's a whatever because of the fact that what makes it what made it cheesy because of the fact that Wonder Woman you know being in this male dominant society of the early 20th century she's dealing with all this crap that men do and part of me I, I kind of pick about it because part of me is like why are we getting beat over the head but I just realized this is the 20th century we're dealing with early 20th century women ain't supposed to be doing all the fighting and the lassoing and the colliding your uh, gauntlets to make explosions and stuff like that so I have to I gave I always give that pass like it's a period piece oh great <laughs> now so like I say it's a period piece so I understand like I I, I, I have to take that with a grain of salt I'm like no it's okay this is part of what made the 20th century the 20th century um some of the editing was a bit off but it's all good um overall though the, the movie's really good uh, there honestly there really is not much to say about this movie because i honestly don't have a lot of complaints i will say my only complaint about it if i'm actually going to be really nitpicky and it's my a complaint that i had when i went to go see batman vs superman initially that and that being why did this movie come out before batman vs superman did why did it have to come out after batman vs superman you would have set, you would have set up the reason why Wonder Woman was there to f help Superman and Batman fight Doomsday if you had initially put this movie out. But at the same time, I understand why they did it the way they did. Um, because you're, you're setting up, you already set up Wonder Woman being in the Justice League. Now you got set her origin. Granted, you should have set her origin before Batman vs Superman. But I digress. It, it, because at that point, you guys, you want to set up the Justice League by having characters have their own solo movies. What, like, Batman has not had a solo movie, and he's not getting it until Justice League is over, which is fine, because he's not going to be fighting Joker, thank Christ. You are set up Superman. Suicide Squad, as much as everyone hates it, I thought it was okay. I still think Suicide Squad should have happened after Justice League. Um, and maybe it would have done a lot better than it did initially. Um, overall, though, I... I Felt as if this movie, this movie does not need, Wonder Woman does not need an Ultimate Edition. Uh, you will get your money's worth. You will understand everything that's going on. Honestly, it's a very, it's a really easy story to follow. Um, even if you're not a Wonder Woman fan, if you don't know anything about Wonder Woman. Uh, I know there are people um, who probably are mad because Wonder Woman actually has a love, love interest, that being Steve Trevor. Because, you know, she's being a strong female empowered character. But, like, here's two things I can say that. One... Wonder Woman, Wonder, all characters, 
in comic books has some love interest in their life okay with flash he has iris west with batman he has almost every woman who's like has powers like talia al ghul or selena kyle who doesn't have powers or vicky vale i think she, i think he who else did, he, who else did batman bang <laughs> uh superman he has lois lane the, um martian manhunter I don't remember. <laughs> the point is, everyone has a love interest, um, which is fine. Now, if they had made, if they had done Earth One Wonder Woman, I would have been a little confused because Earth One Wonder Woman is completely different than um, this Wonder Woman um, because of the fact that she has no love interest. In fact, she, in fact, she, they, um, she was confirmed to be bisexual in the Earth One universe of DC, and so, and she kind of murdered men. So, that's that's number one. Number two, I will actually I didn't I didn't address this. I actually do like the fact that um, this story of Wonder Woman uh, actually follows the New Fifty Two story of Wonder Woman because for those of y'all who don't know, uh, before the New Fifty Two back in twenty eleven, the original story of Wonder Woman was that she was made by uh, she was made out of clay and brought to life by Zeus. In the New Fifty Two. Um, they tell it again, but it's a lie, and you find out that Zeus, being the man ho, the man whore, like all Greek gods and goddesses were, um, smashed some woman, and next thing you know, got her powers. That being um, Wonder Woman's mama. So, yeah, I actually do like the fact that they do use the New Fifty Two story arc of how Wonder Woman comes to life, than the initial pre-crisis and post-crisis story of how she comes in other than that though my final verdict of the movie is go see it honestly go see this movie support this movie we need more female characters we don't need another Catwoman. please god don't have another Catwoman. we have jessica jones we have for marvel we have jessica jones and we have agents of shield because let's just face it my boo chloe bennett carries that show along with clark gregg shouts to phil colson with jessica jones Kristen Ritter does an amazing job, and um, with the DC characters, you know, Legends of Tomorrow, you have uh, White Canary um, carrying, helping carry the show and stuff. Overall, this movie's really good. This movie is fantastic. If I were, I'm gonna give it a rating. Go see it. See it now. Go see it twice if you need to. Go watch it in I uh, IMAX if you want to. Just go do that, okay? Please do. This movie was a, this movie was a fun, exciting movie to go see. This is, and I'm telling you now, this is not because I want a DC movie to succeed, uh, succeed so bad that I will take the lowest denominator. I am telling you guys, this movie was well directed, this movie was well edited, the screen, uh, the, the uh, dialogue was good, the fight choreography was spectacular. For me, again, this is Captain America First Avenger for me, and I like First Avenger, so I like this movie. Go see the movie, and that's all I got to say about that. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my uh, channel on YouTube, The Reckless Fox, not The Reckless Fox, that's my Twitter, at Reckless Fox. Um, sh uh, follow me on Twitter at The Reckless Fox, and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Reckless Fox. And please be sure to follow um, Rangers Live Chat, where we uh, talk about all the news of Power Rangers, whether it's the television show um, and other news, me news outlets about Power Rangers and stuff. Other than that, guys, uh, yeah, I'm done. I love this movie, and that's all I got to say. Until then, guys, this is Reckless Fox. Peace out, bless up, keep on Reckless Day $20 or less, and I'll see y'all on the next movie review. I don't know, maybe y'all go see Tupac in a couple weeks. Peace.